Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Get out your King James Bible and uh, turn to Mark 15.32. Mark 15.32. Right. There's a big thing going on. I've been looking online because I look at the news and everything, and there's a lot of uh, news talk shows on YouTube. And there's this big, looks like this big fight going on between Zionist Jews, and I call them closet Catholics, or openly Catholic. And one of the biggest things that's being pushed is Christ is King, Christ is King, okay? And I've noticed it, and I've, I really haven't said anything about it. And then I had a sister in Christ ask me some questions about the Jews. What if the Jews would have accepted? And we're going to do another video on that. What if the Jews would have accepted Jesus Christ, you know, the first time? Or in the book of Acts, when Stephen stoned to death, that they would have accepted Jesus Christ as their king uh, in the book of Acts, when they're preaching the kingdom of heaven? And I got to thinking about this situation here where they keep saying, Christ is king, Christ is king. And I'm like, well, how many of you guys notice the title of the video? <laughs> okay, Those of you who know your Bible, you know the title of it. When someone comes out with a phrase and says, such and such, and we all should be saying this, you know, like Jesus is Lord, or whatever, they come out with these all these worldly phrases and stuff, and sometimes they'll steal from the Bible and they'll tweak it a little bit and say this. What are we supposed to say, Brother Sis Christ? Those of us who are King James Bible believers. We're, that's why I put down there Berea time. The Bereans search the scriptures daily to see if those things are so. When someone comes along and says, Oh, you know, there is no catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, called the day of Christ, that blessed hope. Chapter and verse, we show it to them. Yeah, there is. Well, there is no eternal security where the Bible says, you know, um, Grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby ye are sealed into the day of redemption. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of, of Jesus Christ, that, that ye may know ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Okay. Everlasting life, where you find it? In Jesus Christ. And Jesus said it is finished on the cross. Those who come to him, the Bible says God is nigh unto them that have a broken heart and save as such that be of a contrite spirit. Those who come to the Calvary, to the cross broken in repentance, if they skip repentance, they're not saved. And come to the cross broken in repentance, believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, confess both in prayer and ask God to save them. And when God saves you, you're sealed. See, they come up with all these phrases, and they try to get away from this, and they try to get away from that. So when you hear someone say, Christ is king, and everyone online seems on YouTube, what I'm realizing, real quick, Brothers of Christ, is YouTube, I think, a lot, it's starting to come to light. All these people that were closet Catholics are starting to come out openly Catholic. Have you noticed that? If you kind of go around to different channels, because you're trying to see the news, you're trying to see what's going on, you can't trust the news that's going on the average cable television program. So you go on here, you read some articles, you read this. They're starting to favor Catholicism. They're trying to speak nice of Catholicism. And a lot of them uh, that were once, oh, I'm just a Christian like you. I'm just a Christian like you. Next thing you know, they're being ordained in the Catholic Church. They're coming out saying, well, I, 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 don't, I don't know about the Catholic Church. I'm interested in the Catholic Church. I really am. It's pretty interesting. What is it? These are closet Catholics. Wolves in sheep's clothing. And they're trying to draw as many disciples after them and get as many people to go back to Rome. So this whole, and we're going to get into this, this whole movement of Christ is King, you're going to realize it's Catholic. It's not King James Bible. It's not true biblical Christianity. It's not supposed to have anything to do with this Christ is King. Okay? Please bear with me, and we're going to go through the scriptures. So I told you to turn to Mark 15.32. When I clicked in and said, okay, the exact phrase, Christ is King, in the King James Bible, how many times do you think it came up? Christ is King. Guess how many times it came up? Zero. Zero times. So then I said, well, how about we just see if we find anything that's kind of, that's kind of like it. All right? And that's when Mark 15, 13 came up. It says, let Christ the King. And people will be like, amen. amen. They don't keep reading. Let Christ the King of Israel. Descend now from the cross that we may see and believe, and they that were crucified with him reviled him. We did a whole study on this, how both thieves on the cross reviled him, and then later on one repented 
and believed that he was innocent, that he was perfect, that he was God. Okay? And he said, and you get that whole story. But let, this, let Christ the King Israel descend now from the cross. These are the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes mocking Jesus Christ on the cross. And they said, let Christ the King of Israel descend now. But it doesn't say Christ is king. It's them mocking him. Now as we get into this, we're going to realize that the Jews do believe Christ is king. Like I said, this big fight between Zionist Jews and closet Catholics and openly Catholic. The thing is, is the Jews, the Orthodox Jews, the Zionist Jews are just controlled by Catholicism. Another thing i got to point out, brothers and sisters Christ, be careful how Satan works. Especially through the Catholic Church, through the Jesuit order. They play both sides. On one side... They're trying to wipe out the Jews. Get rid of the Jews so they can have the Holy Land for themselves. On the other side, they're acting like, we're your friends. Give us a third of the land in Israel. And they did. Give, them the, give us the third, third of the land in Israel. We can live, and we can live peacefully together. They're playing both sides. Okay. Who's running the Zionist Jews? Catholic, Catholicism. And then you have, it's just a big show. Don't fall for the show. You know? Don't fall for all the tricks and antics. Okay? But the Orthodox Jews that are still you know, praying at the Wailing Wall, because they think that's part of the temple when it's not, but they're still desperately seeking the Christ, the Messiah who is called Christ. They're still looking for their Christ. They do believe Christ is King. But do you know what they don't believe? What we just read there, they're mocking somebody on the cross. They don't believe that person on the cross is Christ, the Messiah. They don't believe Jesus Christ is the King. Okay? Turn to Luke 23, 2. Luke 23, 2. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nations and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, <coughs> which was a lie. Remember he said, Give unto Caesar's that is Caesar's, and render unto God the things that are God's. When they tried to trick him up with the... With is it wrong to pay tribute to Caesar? He said, bring me a coin. So they bring him a coin. And he said, whose subscription is this? Well, it's Caesar's. Then he said, render unto Caesar's the things that be Caesar's, and render unto God the things that be God. They just lied. And that's what people are doing. It's all about lies and deception when it comes to the world. Trying to get you away from this book. When someone says something, you go chapter and verse. Tri he forbid to give tribute to Caesar. Well, I got scripture that says otherwise. Right. saying that he himself is Christ a king. Not Christ is king, Christ a king. They wouldn't say Christ is king. Why? Because they didn't believe Jesus is Christ, the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Remember when he asked Peter? He said, who do the people say that I am? Well, some say that, you know, you're, you're a prophet, uh, you know, one of the prophets, uh, Elias reborn, you know, all these names and titles other than the right one. And then he asked the, the disciples, who do you say that I am? And Peter stood up and said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Christ is, in other words, Messiah who is called Christ. What does Christ mean? Christ means king. That's what Christ means, king. But king of who? The Jews. Let's keep going. Christ is Christ a king. They don't believe he's the king. They don't believe Christ is king. That's why they were mocking him. He said, let Christ the king. They weren't actually saying he's Christ the king. They were mocking him in Mark 15, 32. In Luke 23, they're saying he could, he's saying himself is Christ a king. And Pilate asked him, saying, art thou, when he said Christ a king, a king means one of many. So then what does Pilate do? And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him, saying, Thou sayest it. Now this whole big push saying, Christ is king, Christ is king. Why did they cut off of the Jews? Why did they say of the Jews? Like the Bible says. Now in Revelation 17, 14, when Jesus comes back, he rules and reigns for a thousand years. He has a title. Okay? These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for He is capital L, Lord of lowercase l, Lords, capital K, King of lowercase k, Kings. He has that title, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. 
But notice the word Christ isn't mentioned at all in all that. And they that are with him are called chosen and faithful. The Bible says if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. When we come back, if we suffer before him in this life, living a life of Christ, if you're in this last days, brothers and Christ, and you know what I'm talking about, in these last days, if you're living a life of Christ, you're going to be suffering for him. You're going to lose family, friends, you're going to lose wives, you're going to lose husbands, you're going to lose your daughters to the world, you're going to lose your sons to the world. Okay. You're going to go through persecution. Not to the point of death yet here in America, but in other countries they are getting to, being put to death. They act like it's not going on. It's not going on today. It's not going on. Yeah, it is. It's still going on today. True, biblical, Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women. Right? Their lives are still being put on the line. If you suffer with Him, you shall also reign with Him. When we come back with Him... We will be priests and kings, but he is capital K, king of kings, and capital L, lord of lords. I'm not saying that we don't believe Jesus is a king. He's capital K, king of kings. That's a title for him. Talking about the whole world as a whole. But when you're using the term Christ by itself, and then saying is king, where does the word Christ come from? Uh, turn to John 4.25. Unless I didn't say that, Revelation 17, 14 is where we read the title, Lord of Lord, King of Kings. But turn to John 4, 25. John 4, 25. First of all, we get it from the Bible. John 4, 25. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. The Jewish people, and like I said, and I'm waiting for someone to prove me wrong, because if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But the Samaritans, they think, well, those are just people from Samaria. No, that's a Samarian that's from Samaria. But a Samaritan, T-E-Tun, you look at her, she's sitting at the well. This is Jacob's well. Our father Jacob, they're looking for the Messiah. What is that? I believe the Samaritans are Jews that have lost the inheritance. And that's why the, actual, the other Jews want nothing to do with them. That's why they'll, the Jews will have dealings with Gentiles, but they will not have dealings with Samaritans. will have nothing to do with the Samaritans. When Jesus sent out his 12 apostles, or his disciples two by two, he said, go not in the way of the Jews or the Samaritans. Why? Because they've lost the inheritance, and Jesus is there to offer the inheritance to the Jews that are still have, they're still having, they can still have the inheritance. They haven't lost it. You say, well, how do you lose it? It's a whole other Bible study, but in the Old Testament, there's a lot of ways it talks about that they'd be cut off from their people. They'll be cut off from their people. They'll be cut off. That's, that's saying they're losing the inheritance. That inheritance no longer applies to them, even though they're by blood they're Jews, but they're no longer Jews in spirit. They've been cut off. Okay? But she says that thou art the Messiah, which cometh, which is called Christ. And you see that throughout the Bible. Uh, Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, the king, be Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Wise men. There's a whole, I believe, they, they always make out like there's three wise men. I'm telling you, brothers and Christ, you need to stay away from the pagan holiday Christmas and get back in the Bible, and you'll learn that a lot of things in the pagan holiday Christmas goes against the Bible. I believe it was a whole entourage of wise men come in. Why? Because it was enough men for the king to notice who are all these people. From the east to Jerusalem saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. The other thing is that by the time the wise men did catch up to Jesus, he was two or three years old. It wasn't at the, it wasn't the manger. Okay, the manger scene. But that's, that's a whole other thing. I've got videos. You can go watch them. Why I don't celebrate Christmas. I'm not going to hate you, brother, if you keep trying to celebrate Christmas. I'm just telling you, you're going to get messed up by it. I've seen brethren who get messed up by it. When they start putting the world first and the Word of God last, they get really messed up. But the point I'm making here is Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the Christ. Okay? Christ is King. Yeah, of the Jews. Jesus was born king of the Jews. He died, Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. 
Now that's where you get to John 1.29. John 1.29. Remember, you can always pause the video and turn. John 1.29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and say, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He was born King of the Jews. Why are they saying Christ is King and leaving out of the Jews? They purposely leave that part out. And just say, Christ is king. Christ is king for the body of Christ today. They're, they're not saved. Those Catholics aren't saved. The closet Catholics aren't saved. The Zionist Jews are definitely not saved. But Orthodox Jews, once again, they're not saved because they still reject Jesus Christ. It's not Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ is king of kings. That's something we would say, brothers and Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is king of kings and lord of lords. That's what a true Bible-believing, God-fearing man would say. But we wouldn't cut out Jesus and take his name completely out. And we wouldn't take out of the Jews and just say Christ is king. But you see this huge movement. Christ is king. Christ is king of the Jews. Romans 5, 6. Romans 5, 6. From when we were yet without strength. Romans 5, 6. I need to pause sometimes to give you time to pause the video and turn to it, or time to turn to it. But Romans 5, 6. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man one would die. Yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Okay? Remember what John said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He died for us, those who would come to the cross broken, in true biblical repentance, having sorrow in their heart for their personal sins that they've sinned against God, fearing the consequences, fearing the man that's going to send, that's going to implement those consequences. Hell. And believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Jesus is the Son of God, not lowercase g, God the Son. Catholic paganism. He is the capitalist son of God. Son of the living God. He's son of God. He's God the Father manifest in the flesh. It was God's blood that was shed on the cross. And God's only God's blood can wash my sins away. And what Jesus went through on the cross, I should have gone through. How Christ died for us. Confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. 9. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life, the resurrection, His death, burial, and resurrection. The gospel is believing how, how He died for our sins, repentance, how he died, that he's God the Father manifest in the flesh. It's God's blood that was shed on the cross. How he died. The Lamb of God, the perfect sacrifice for sins. The Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. For our sins, repentance. How he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. We shall be saved by his life. Proving that he is God fully and completely. Not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that, because we're going to get into that a little bit more, how we address Him. We don't just say Christ. We don't cut the name Jesus out. We don't cut the, the, the title Lord out. By whom we have now received the atonement, the perfect sacrifice. Jesus was born King of the Jews. But he died, Lamb of God, that taketh away the sins of the world. He died so the salvation can go out into the world. That's why this time period is not called the church age. Chapter, once again, we've got to be Berea time. I know this is hard for a lot of these Babel building people that have been infected and diseased with the ways of the world. Traditions of men, rudiments of the world, philosophy. Mostly the Catholic church coming in and infecting all the Babel buildings. We got to get back to Berea time, chapter and verse, church, where it says church age. No, it's called the time of the Gentiles. Why? Because when Jesus died, Lamb of God that take away the sins of the world. 
When Jesus was born, it was king of the Jews, and salvation is of the Jews, the kingdom of heaven gospel. Salvation is of the Jews. But when he died, salvation went out to the world. The time of the Gentiles just means that now salvation is no longer of the Jews, and Gentiles can get grafted in and adopted in. Salvation goes out to everyone. Anybody can get saved today, Jew or Gentile. There's neither Jew nor Gentile, you know, bond nor free, male nor female, for we're all one in Christ Jesus. Anybody can get saved today. Right? Now, what I believe what's going on here, why it's so dangerous to get caught up in different movements, is they're always pushing something that's false. We've talked about that post and mid-trib, that you can lose your salvation, uh, the Trinity. We go chapter and verse and capital T, Trinity is a title for God. Most people will just turn the video off right now. You don't believe in the Trinity? I believe in the Godhead of the King James Bible. When you say capital T Trinity, I say chapter and verse. You say God and three persons, I say chapter and verse, because Godhead teaches that it's God and the person singular of Jesus Christ. And we prove it with the scriptures. He's the only one called a person in the Bible. He's the only one that has a body, soul, and spirit in the Bible. The soul is God the Father, the spirit's the Holy Spirit, and he's the body. But, I could go to, but the whole point is we have to get back to Berea time, chapter and verse. You have all these things come out. They say Christ is king. When they say Trinity, they're pushing an agenda. Trinity is satanic. It's Catholic. And we've proven it. But the easiest way, when you have someone come up to you, I'm one of you. I'm a Christian just like you. Trinity. We go what? Berea time. Chapter and verse. Chapter and verse. They can't find it. Capital T, Trinity as a, as a title for God. Lowercase t, Trinity is a description of God. It's not in here. God in three persons, not in here. God the Son, not in here. God the Holy Spirit, not in here. Triune God, not in here. Where do they get that garbage? Catholic Church. Someone comes along and says, Christ is king. It sounds good. It does. It sounds good. Christ is king. Christ is king. But there's a hidden agenda behind it. And I'm going to tell you what it is, brother, says Christ. The Catholic Church is the number one people that, that and all her daughters, the Catholic Church pushes replacement theology. Some people say, well, what's replacement theology? It's where they say God is done with the Jewish people and has replaced the Jewish people with the body of Christ. God has nothing to do with the Jews anymore. The Jews are no more. He wants nothing to do with them. All he cares about is the body of Christ. That's replacement theology. Now is it starting to sink in why they took out of the Jews? Why they took out the title, the Lord Jesus? They're stealing something from the Old Testament because the four Gospels are under the Old Testament. Remember the book of Hebrews. The New Testament can only come in at the death of the testator. When Jesus died on the cross, that brought in the New Testament. Now this, because they're in a collection of books called the New Testament, doesn't mean it's the actual New Testament. Because each one of the books, the New Testament doesn't start until the death of Jesus Christ. So they're stealing from the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. They're stealing from the Old Testament. And they're trying to apply it to the body of Christ today. It's replacement theology. Like I said, the Catholic Church, on one hand, they want to wipe out the Jews completely. We've replaced the Jews, and that land is our land in Jerusalem, that holy city. That's our city, that's our land, and we're trying to wipe out the Jews on one hand. On the other hand, they're trying to pretend they're their friend. I'm your friend! But you have all these people, replacement theology. When you say Christ is king for the body of Christ, you're pushing replacement theology. You're saying God's done with the Jews. But once again, chapter and verse, where God's done with the Jews. Chapter and verse. Romans eleven twenty five. 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this ministry, mystery. Brethren, he's talking about the time of the Gentiles. It's the time of the Gentiles, and he's, a, he's addressing brethren today, the body of Christ. That you should be ignorant in this ministry. Mi Mystery. Now, some people are ignorant. They'll, they'll say Christ is king and they're ignorant. They're not really trying to push 
replacement theology, but they get caught up in the movement and everyone's doing it and it's cool and everything and I get to be part of a group or something and they're doing it ignorantly. But if they're seeking the truth, God will show them the truth. If they don't want the truth, what does the Bible say? If any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant still. Okay. Should be ignorant of this mystery. Lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. Satan's pushing an agenda. He wants to wipe out the Jewish people. If he can wipe out the Jewish people, he can prove God a liar. Because God's not done with the Jewish people. The church, the body of Christ, has not replaced Israel. We get adopted in to the family. We get adopted into the, um, the inheritance. That blindness in part has happened to Israel, in part... Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. This is the time of the Gentiles. The pause button got hit on, on Israel. The kingdom of heaven, is going. To, that gospel, I believe, is going to come back in the time of Jacob's trouble. And they're going to go back to preaching that Jesus is uh, Christ. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Your king is coming. Get ready for your king. Your king is coming. That gospel is going to come back in the time of Jacob's trouble. The pause button got hit. They're in blindness in part, it says there. That blindness in part has happened to Israel. That the, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Now notice it says there, wise in your own conceits. Proverbs 3, 7 says, be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Be not wise in thine own eyes. World's wisdom. Man's wisdom. The, Satan's agenda. He tries, to, he tries to appeal to men with world's wisdom and get you all puffed up and thinking that you know better than God does. Proverbs 12, 15. The way of the fool is right in his own eyes. What does the Bible say about a fool? A fool of sin in his heart, there is no God. These people you see on there fighting back and forth, they're, they're on their way to hell. They're lost. They haven't followed the true plan of salvation. They haven't grabbed a King James Bible and go, that's it. People say, well, you have to believe this is the Word of God to be saved. Paul says, receive the engrafted Word that's able to save your soul. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy Word is truth. Now, someone can preach the, the truth. When you come to this book, at one point, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, the Bible, the Holy Spirit's going to say, that's it. That's the Word of God. Now, you can fall away from it. But I always question people who reject the King James Bible as God's perfect written word. And I always err on the side of caution and just say, I'm going to go back to step one. What's step one? The gospel. That's always step one. The gospel in the King James Bible. Not the Bible perversions. The Catholic Bible perversions. The King James Bible. Always go back to step one. Err on the side of caution. Preach the gospel to them. If they are truly saved and born again, you're reminding them of who saved them, why they got saved, why they needed to get saved, and who it is they serve. They must have forgotten. But the way of the fool is right in his own eyes. These people out here, oh, we have no problem with saying Jesus is Lord. We, uh, we'll get to that later. We have no problem saying Jesus is Lord. And we have no problem saying, you know, Christ is King. And we have no problem saying this and that. The way of the fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkened unto counsel is wise. And there's no greater counsel than the Holy Spirit opening the scriptures to you. You can get counseling from me, you can get counseling from another brother in Christ, but there's no greater counsel than the Holy Spirit opening the scriptures to you, brother says Christ, and showing you the truth. No greater counsel. Amen. Isaiah 5.21 Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. These people that are pushing, Christ is king. It's replacement theology. Christ is king of the Jews. And of course, uh, you're saying, well, Catholic Church is clashing with, with Jews. Well, of course the Jews of a whole don't, they believe Christ is king. They just don't believe who is king. That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. They don't believe in Jesus Christ. Christ is King. What about Jesus? What about the Lord Jesus? What about King of the Jews? They cut everything out. Wise in their own eyes. And 
Blindness in part, Romans 11.13, turn to Romans 11.13, blindness in part. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are, are my flesh and... might save some of them, talking about the Jewish people. Paul is still trying to save Jews, even after, you know, the kingdom of heaven got put off, he was still trying to desperately save Jews, along with the Gentiles. And, sorry about that, I'm just trying to fix this. Might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For as the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Okay? We get adopted in. We're going to keep reading. And if some of the branches be broken off, and now being a wild olive tree, wert graft in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. Oh, we replaced Israel. Israel is no more. Boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root. Our Savior is a Jew. Everyone that wrote this book is a Jew. When salvation first came, Jesus was king of the Jews. Salvation is of the Jews when he was born, when he first came, in the likeness of sinful flesh. It was of the Jews. Now salvation has gone out to the world. Boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Salvation went out to the world because of their disbelief. Absolutely. Verse 20, well, because of their unbelief they were broken off. They rejected Jesus Christ as their king. King of the Jews. And that he was the Son of God. God manifest in the flesh, there to be their King, the Christ, the Messiah. Because I believe they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. Where's the fear of these people that are trying to erase the Jews, wipe them out, and do away with the Jews? All oh, the Jews are no more. All oh, the, the church has replaced the Jews. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God not spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he not spare thee. We are grafted in. Salvation went out into the world until the time of the Gentiles be come in. Blindness in part has happened to Israel. God's not done with Israel. Okay? Brothers says Christ, do not get caught up in Christ as King movement. Don't. Don't get caught up in any movement that doesn't line up with this book. Right? When you're reading uh, the book of Acts, I'm reading the book of Acts. They, you go through, they'll try to graph in the book of Acts because there's times in there where they tell the Jews, when Jews are present, they tell the Jews they have to believe that Jesus is the Christ. Why? Because they're still preaching, it's a transition book, Acts is, from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And they're still preaching the Old Testament gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Repent and be water baptized for the remission of sins and believe that Jesus is the Christ, their king. They're still trying to offer the kingdom of heaven, the day of the Lord, that thousand year reign of Jesus Christ to the Jews in the book of Acts. And somewhere along the way it transitions over to repent and believe, no more water baptism. I believe personally, and there's some brethren that disagree with me, I believe water baptism is only for the kingdom of heaven gospel. It's not for today at all. Well, you can do it after salvation as an outward showing. No, the changed life is the outward showing. When you have like something like water baptism, you open the door as the outward showing, that opens the door to Satanists. Wolves and, sheep's, wolves and sheep's clothing to come in and get water baptism and say, Look, I'm one of you! What about the changed life? Paul said, prove yourselves. Prove your own selves. Check whether you be in the faith. 
We're to judge. Are they lining up with this book? No. But they got water baptized after salvation as a sign, for, uh, as a show, you know, an outward showing. That's not the outward showing the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that the outward showing is the new man, the new birth, the life that you now live, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Notice Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus is there. Lord is there. It's not just Christ. In Christ. No. Christ Jesus our Lord. Don't get caught up in Christ as King. Okay? And they're going to try to deceive you using good words and fair speeches, deceiving the hearts of the simple. They're going to try to wrestle the scriptures to their own destruction. And the most people that will try to defend this Christ as King, they'll have to go to the Old Testament or they'll have to go to the book of Acts, which is the transition book, to try to push it. Right? Why? You, I bet you if you hit them up, they're not dispensational. They don't follow 2 Timothy 2.15. Paul says, The dispensation of grace that's given to me to you word. The, the gospel that we're under today was dispensed to Paul for the time of the Gentiles. The gospel that was going on in the early book of Acts and the Old Testament was the gospel of the kingdom of heaven that was only for the Jews. Do not get caught up in Christ as king movement. Stick with the Bible, brother says Christ. Stick with the Bible. Make that, making that for the body of Christ when it's for the Jewish people. And yes, most Jews today reject Jesus as Christ, the King of Israel. They do. I said it before, I'll say it again. They do. They reject Jesus. So if, I'm not surprised that there's a fight going on, but more I look into it, the more I realize that they're just putting on a show. Catholicism's back in these, the Zionist Jews. Then you have Catholicism back in these professing Christians. Oh, we're not really Catholic, but they are. They're closet Catholics. Catholicism's back in these guys. Catholicism's back in these guys. And they're just putting on one big show. But the, the real Orthodox Jews, okay, of course they reject Jesus being the Christ, the Son of the living God. We, you read about it, how they tried to stone him. They tried to kill him multiple times. Okay? I was reading, uh, remember when salvation went out to the world, brothers and Christ, we're in the time of the Gentiles, the, the gospel that was given to Paul, the dispensation of grace that's given to me, to you, were. This is Paul saying this. Okay? I'm just got finished reading the book of Acts. I'm getting towards the end of Acts, where Paul is sitting there, and he got uh, the the crowd pulled him out of the temple because he went to Jerusalem, pulled him out of the temple, and they're about ready to kill him. And the Roman soldiers come down and rescue him, take him up, and he says, "Can I talk to the people?" And he beckons with his hands to get everybody quiet, and everyone gets quiet. Kind of like that right there. Everyone gets quiet. Then he starts speaking to them in Hebrew, Jewish, Hebrew. So they even get the more quiet because, okay, this is a man that's trying to say everything about us. It's only about us. Hebrews. And he starts preaching to them Jesus. He starts preaching to them what happened to him on the way. His life before he got saved, you know, persecuting uh, Christians. And how he saw Jesus in the way and he tells the whole story. I apologize about that, brothers and Christ. But if you keep reading in that chapter, I can't remember the chapter, but Paul, he's telling his story, road to Damascus, okay? But the moment he mentions Gentiles, just the word Gentile, the people go nuts. It's only about us. It's only about us. Not anymore. You rejected your king. You rejected your Christ. It's not that God did away with them. It's no longer only about them. And replacement theology is the opposite direction where the church, it's only about the church and God's done with the Jews. No, he's not. Okay? But we, when the Bible says that uh, we're to provoke, the, where salvation went out to the world as Gentiles, we're to provoke the Jews to jealousy. Why? Because salvation was originally of the Jews. God would save a Gentile, a heathen Gentile? Oh yeah, he saved me. And if you're watching this, I pray you're saved. And he saved you. Okay. Don't get caught up in this Christ as King. How the body of Christ refers primarily to our Savior. It does use the word Christ. But does it use the word Christ by itself and says Christ is King? No. Like I said, we don't, we don't find that in Scripture at all. Christ is King. 
Those exact phrasing, not in the scriptures whatsoever. How does the body of Christ refer primarily to our Savior? Romans 5.11. We're going to go through this real quick. Romans 5.1. I'm sorry. Romans 5.1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is there, but it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5.11. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. 1 Corinthians 1, 2, Unto the church of God which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that is in every place, call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. It's Jesus Christ. And Lord is oftentimes put in with it, our Lord. Both theirs and ours. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 1.3 Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 6.18 Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1.2 Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And I keep going on. Ephesians. I did the beginning of each book and the end of each book. Six, Ephesians 6.24 Grace be unto you that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Philippians 1.2 Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the, from the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, you haven't made your point yet. Philippians 4.23 The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Colossians 1.2 To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ which are at Colossae. You say, well, it's in Christ. Yes. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. What Christ? The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Colossians chapter 2 verse 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in them, in Him. Walk ye in Him. That's the outward showing, not water baptism. So walk ye into Him. Remember what John, the, I kind of left that part out, what John the Baptist said. I baptize with water, but he that cometh after me is mightier than me, whose shoes I'm not worthy to unlatch. It is he that will baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Holy Ghost, people who get saved and get to go to heaven. With fire, those who go to hell. Notice that and when you read, Jesus never baptized anybody. His apostles continued John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven gospel that was revealed to John the Baptist. Okay, he's the only real Baptist. <laughs> okay, there are no Baptists today. They're just fakes and frauds. He's the only real John the Baptist. He, the kingdom of heaven gospel was given to him to preach. Water baptism. And they kept doing it because they, when John was put in prison, the Bible talks about how Jesus picked up John's mantle and started preaching the kingdom of heaven, the same gospel. I'm your king. Repent, be water baptized for the remission of sins. You're washing your sins away with water. Water. I was reading that in Acts. As you're going through Acts, one of them says, come and be baptized to wash your sins away. Water. Do we get our sins washed away with water today, brother says Christ? No, 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 no. My sins are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm baptized by Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. Not water. But I digress. Let's keep going. Christ is, is Jesus, Jesus the Lord. Colossians 2.6. 1 Thessalonians 1.1. 1, 1, the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians 3.18. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And I stop there. But you can go along the Pauline epistles. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. This big push that Christ is king. Why are they leaving out the Lord Jesus? And when they say Christ is king, why are they leaving out of the Jews? Because there's a hidden agenda there. Don't be part of replacement theology in any way, shape, or form, brothers and sisters Christ. In any way, shape, or form. And dealing with people when it comes to when this isn't their foundation, all you can do is preach the gospel to them. Just another heads up. Remember, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. 
when they don't have the same standard we do, all you can do is preach the gospel to them. And it's up to them. But I've seen brethren really get into it with Bible perversionists, which is pointless. You don't have the same standard. They're using Catholic Bibles. You're using the perfect written word of God, the King James Bible. You don't have the same standard. Okay. Jesus holds the title Christ and is King of the Jews, but the world wants to draw away of, do away with of the Jews. The world as a whole, and we're seeing it today with what's going on in Israel right now and what's going on here, the Muslims going all over the world as refugees, when they're not refugees, but they're acting like refugees to infiltrate the whole world. And you've got Europe, they're protesting in Europe. You've got here in America, they're, prote they're protesting all over the place. Okay. The world wants to do away with the Jews. Because who's the lowercase g guy of this world? Satan. Remember what the Bible says? You are of your father, the devil. If you're lost, you're of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father you would do. He was a liar from the beginning and the father of it. And we preach the truth, they don't want the truth. Don't get caught up in fighting with them too much if you don't have the same standard. But if there's a brother in Christ, or someone professing to be a brother or sister in Christ, that this they claim to keep, they claim to believe the King James Bible, that this is their final authority. Then by all means, try to reach them for the truth. Be a Bree and search the Scriptures daily to see if those things are so. And I mentioned this earlier that we talk about it a little bit, but this Christ is King is the same thing when we get into these people that are closet Catholics or openly Catholic that says Jesus is Lord. I know a man online that he has a huge tattoo on his arm that says Jesus is Lord. Then he has uh, Bible addresses tattooed up this arm. He's got tattoos up this. And you say, chapter and verse, what does the Bible say about marking up your flesh? Piercing your flesh or marking the flesh? See, he's not, he doesn't care about this. He, he's, he cares about traditions of men. And he'll, start, he'll act like he's a Christian. And he'll start a quote from the scriptures and stuff like that sometimes. But they're Bible perversions that he's quoting from. But the point is, he put Jesus as Lord. And we try to tell people that's wrong. What, you don't believe Jesus is Lord? Oh, I believe that Jesus is the Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ, today you're going to get so messed up. And how, this is how you're going to get messed up, brothers and sisters in Christ. They take out one word and mess up everything. And the New King James, I always point this out because it was taught to me. And the New King James, Jesus says, I go not up to the feast. Then a verse later, or a chapter later, he goes up to the feast. They made Jesus out to be a liar. Why? Because they took out one word, yet. I go not up yet to the feast. They took out one word and made him a liar. But Jesus Christ, one word can make a big difference when they're messing with this book. Turn to 1 Corinthians 12.3. 1 Corinthians 12.3. It's Jesus is not, it's not Jesus is Lord. It's Jesus is what? The Lord. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God, by the Spirit of God, calleth Jesus accursed. How many people attack the real Jesus Christ that we preach, brothers and sisters in Christ, when you're preaching the gospel? Men in ministry that we preach. How often do they attack the real Jesus Christ? It's almost like they're cursing him. They love that worldly antichrist Jesus, that fake Jesus. The Jesus that's okay with sin and worldliness. There is no changed life. There is no repentance and salvation. There is no confessing both in prayer and asking God to save you. You just take salvation because you've earned it with your head belief, head knowledge, faith belief, and so on and so forth. Or you have to merit salvation or you're part of this club or whatever. It's almost like they're cursing Jesus, the real Jesus Christ. Because when you go to tell them about the real Jesus Christ, they get angry. They get bitter. They get hateful. When Paul was standing there before the Jews, and he, he mentioned the word Gentiles, they started going crazy, kicking dirt up, throwing dirt up in the air. They just, almost like they were demon-possessed. Just going crazy. And that's the same thing I get when I try to preach Jesus Christ to false religions out there. They start going crazy. Now, they don't go, sometimes they don't go that crazy as what happened with... Uh, Paul, in his situation, like the Jews, but they, they go crazy. They start looking for the exit. They try to run away. 
They want nothing to do with the real Jesus Christ. But let's keep going. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. We put this out there as Jesus is the Lord. Now, can someone that's preaching that normally says Jesus is the Lord slip up and say Jesus is Lord because he hears the lost world say it so much? He's trying to stand against it. Could he slip up and make a mistake? Yeah. Have some grace. But when someone is adamant by saying Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, and they even tattoo it on their, their well, the the wouldn't fit, then you don't tattoo. You're not supposed to tattoo on your body to begin with. This is after someone got saved. If you did it before you got saved, brother says Christ, you cover up your tattoos. You are ashamed of your sin that you gave to God at the cross, and you don't want to promote it and have the world do this, make the same mistake you made. You cover up your, your tattoos. You don't flaunt them to the world. You don't get saved. and then Because before you got saved, I think he just had a few tattoos. After he got saved, his whole body seems to be tattooed up. That's not of the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry, but that's not of the Holy Spirit. He's falling for that fake Christ that says you can have the world and be saved. We who truly get saved and born again, we're called out of the world. To be separate from the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Be not conformed to this world. Love not the world. You're not supposed to be a friend of the world. The outward showing is not water baptism. The outward showing is that you're no longer conformed to the world. You no longer love the world. You're no longer a friend of the world. You're set apart from the world. They look at you and go, that's not the man I once knew. Let's say someone knew you when you were lost. You should be different enough that they look at you and go, you're different. There's something different about you. You're not the same man I once knew. No, I'm not. That man's dead and buried with Jesus Christ. Let me tell you about him. But they're pushing this, Jesus is Lord. No, Jesus is the Lord. Christ is King. No, Christ is King of the Jews. They keep taking letters, they keep taking words out. They keep messing with this book so they can mess with you, brother, says Christ, so they can deceive the world. So, brother, says Christ, stay away from movements that are making statements that don't line up with this book. And like I said, when you hear things that sound, some doesn't sound right, or there's new, the worldly movements. I'd stay away from worldly movements to begin with, when it's the world doing it. Okay? But when stuff pops up, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to, we're supposed to jump up and go, Berea time. <laughs> no, you don't have to say that. But Berea time. No, we're supposed to go chapter and verse. The Bereans sought the scriptures daily to see, check the scriptures daily to see if those things are so. We're supposed to go chapter and verse on this? Now they can take words in here, and, and like I said, they, they take words out, they twist things around. You've got to be knowledgeable of this book, brothers says Christ. Where are you spending most of your time? Is it in this book? Or is it in the world? I love you, brothers says Christ. And I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.